In Numbers chapter 35, uh, let's, shall we all stand and show our respect to the Word of God? The book of Num Numbers chapter 35, uh, verse 11 to 15. We will all read in one voice, Numbers chapter 35, verse 11 to 15. Ready, go. Then he shall appoint the cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may be hither, which giveth any person at unwares. And they shall be unto you cities of refuge from the avenger, that the man slayer had not, until he stand before the congregation in judgment. And of these cities, which shall be six cities, shall ye have for refuge. Ye shall give three cities on the side of your Jordan, and three cities shall be given in the land of Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge, both for the children of Israel, and for the stranger, and for the sojourner among them, that everyone that killeth any person unwares may flee the hater. Let's pray. Lord, we know that you are the very kind and loving God, that even though you have chosen your own nation, and sometimes they run away from you, and they backslide from your teaching, but you still love them and prepare a special place called the City of Refuge. Lord, this is not only for the people in Old Testament, the people of Israelites, but in these contemporary times, we as a human being, we as a born-again Christian, we also need a place of a shelter a city of a refuge. Lord, please help us to see our situation. Sometimes we become ignorant, sometimes we forget our situation. But every time we come to the reality and realize the situation, we are facing the wall. Please help us to see, where is my city of refuge in our life? Lord, please help us to see the lessons, the instruction coming from this city of refuge today. And give me the wisdom, Lord, that I can preach your message effectively to the hearts of these people today. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, this special place called City of Refuge is not for everybody, actually. This is for a special place for a, a particular, particular people or a small number of people who commit something extraordinary. Here in the Bible, this is place is especially designed by God for the people who killed other people. So Bible call it a uh, manslayer. Manslayer in, in contemporary world, we can call it a uh, killer, human killer. But this city of refuge is not for every killers. The Bible, the God, is a special, specially has prepared this for a killer or some killers, but who happen to kill another people, another people without intention. Or we can call it by mistake. The Bible says unawares. That he did not know what he was doing, but by mistake, the result that he found to be himself a killer of another person. And before this man can stand in front of a judgment of the congregation, the person 
the one who wants to revenge him, the this killer, they may kill him immediately, but God has prepared for this situation when a man happened to kill by mistake, that he will still have a time or a place to be protected and run into that city because God has ordered Moses to specially prepare a place so that a killer by mistake will run into the city of refuge and that he will be protected safely until the time that he can stand in front of the congregational judgment, which is court, the court nowadays. And God has ordered, uh, because the, the land that the Israelites occupied with the leadership of God, there is a large area having the, the river of Jordan in the center, and the right side, which is the east side, God ordered three city of refugees in the east side of the river Jordan, and another uh, side, which is the west side of the Jordan River, another three uh, cities of refuge. So, the any killers who happen to kill others without intention, and uh, they can just escape from the, the person who, who wants to uh, give him the avenge, revenge, and then he can run away and hide until the time is ready for the, uh, the, uh, the judgment uh, or the, the court uh, handling. Now, we all know that Israelites, the people of God, was under the slavery for more than 400 years under the Egyptian uh, nation. And when the when this uh, slavery life has become so extremely hard for the Israel people, and they cried and they prayed to God for the, the, the salvation from the slavery, and God heard their praying, so finally he decided to send a man called Moses, and he told Moses, go to the uh, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and bring these my people out of there. So we all know there are many miracles happened that God tried to witness that this is the will of God to save his own people from the slavery of Egyptian. And finally, cutting the long story short, that the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, finally gave up after all these God-given miracles. And so they let the Israelites go home. Actually go to the place where God has promised them to give the place called Canaan. And Bible says that place is a full of honey and then uh, many good things for these uh, Israelites to enjoy. If you happen to look at the, uh, the distance from the Egyptian border to the land of Canaan, actually it's not that far, it's more or less than uh, in between 250 to 300 kilometers, not far. So with the, with the speed of uh, walking uh, on foot, maybe 30, more or less than 30 kilos a day, that the distance between the Egyptian border to the Canaan, it will not take more than one week. <coughs> Even though there may be some mountains or something, uh, but it will be direct, straight, straight distance will be about more or less than 300, uh, less than 300 kilometers. And so it will not take more than seven days of this, uh, the walking distance. But we all know how long it took. It took 40 years. 40 years for these Israel people. And instead of going uh, direct from Egyptian to the Canaan, no more. The lecture is only for 300 kilometers. But because of their disobedience and their uh, black backsliding, and they, God sent them to all the way down to south end of the, uh, the, the, uh, the peninsula, and around and round and round, and finally they come to the Jordan River to cross. Now, 
if we read the Bible, the main reason is because when God created or the, the performed the miracle to save these people from the trouble, they appreciate, they thank, they, they be obedient child. But soon they forget. They, they forgot the gratefulness, all the miracles that God has performed there in their life. And so they, instead of, forget, uh, instead of worshiping God every day, they forgot God and then they worship the idols. And then they worship other pagan, uh, pagan uh, religions from another uh, the nation. And that made God angry. And then God will punish him again. And then after becoming punished, and then they repent. And then uh, came back to God again. And then it just repeated. And because of this reason, God wants to train them to know how to be obedient in God's commandments, that, that's why this is for 40 years. Instead of one week's distance, for 40 years, they traveled in the wilderness and then lived before they, uh, they wandered around, before they come to the, the river of Canaan, the, the Jordan, to cross to, into the land of Canaan. These people, Israelites, they have forgotten so frequently the blessings, the protections, and all those blessings that God has given to them. But for us, for you and me, who can read the Bible, the record of what Israel did, actually the benefit for us is that we can read and we can learn a great lesson from the Bible that if they have, if they have trusted, fully trusted the Lord, their God, and then depend on the supply of God, and obey whatever God has told them to obey, then they could have gone through a very peaceful life. And they don't have to travel 40 years around in the wilderness. Now, we can read the Bible because this is the history of Israelites. And we understand the, how it is written. And the big, big lesson, which is a really beneficial for us, for you and me, whether you are in Korea or whether in the Philippines, the best thing for us to take is do not follow the mistake of Israelites. Now, God gave the Israelites many laws and commandments to follow. But among this, what we read today as a text, God has given, told them to build a six city of refugees, three in the east side of the Jordan River and three in the west side of the Jordan River, to protect at least a small number of people who kill another people by mistake. In Exodus, Exodus chapter 21, verse 12 to 13, it clearly says why God has prepared this, the cities of a uh, uh, refugee. Exodus chapter 21, verse 12 to 13, it says, He that smiteth, smite means hit, okay? He that smiteth a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but God delivered him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. If he happens to kill with the intention, the Bible says he must die. So the Bible is calling them. There's a difference between the killer by mistake can be saved or protected. But the killer with the intention is called a murderer. If you read the Bible more further, there is a how you kill. You kill with a weapon is a murder. The if you kill a man with a stone with intention, you are a murderer. Then you will be put to death also. But the people who kill another person by mistake, here God wants to protect them. And also Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 4 and 5, it says. And it is the case of this slayer, 
which shall flee thither, that he may live. Whoso killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he hated not in time past. As when a man goeth into the wood with his neighbor to hew wood, and his hand fetches a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slipped from the helm, and lighted upon his neighbor, and he died, he shall free, flee unto one of these cities, and he leave. It means, God is so kind, and he is also giving an example, illustration, that for example, a two men go to the mountain to cut some trees with a neighbor. And then one man, and he was using his axe, and uh, hitting the tree, and somehow this uh, head of the axe slipped off from the handle, and flew, and hit the neighbors, and then he died. And this is a very simple example of God, that then in that case, that man should be protected in the city of refuge. And this is how God has prepared those people who are in the big trouble without intention. Now, when these people of Israel, while they're uh, traveling in the wilderness, they repeatedly surrender themselves to the Lord in, in repentance and then to uh, get backslide and then they, uh, they worship another gods and they uh, be forgiven and they commit sin again and they be forgiven and commit sin again and repeatedly and it helps us to see ourselves in this life. How many times you and me when we know that we commit sin against God, we nail down and ask for the forgiveness to, the, to, to our God, and then we thank that sin is forgiven, and before it is too long, then we commit another sin. This is exactly, the Old Testament, even though it's a history of Israel people, it is a, really a picture of our life that we are going through. So, the real picture of this refuge, of the city, of the six cities of a refuge, is a good illustration of Jesus Christ for us to have Jesus Christ as a city of a refuge. We have a many place to run into and we face what a difficult situation it is. So I don't know how to move from now on and I'm facing the wall and I am surrounded in four corners. Well, 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 what will be my next move, or my, my next step? And I have no place to go. And every time the Jesus is offering a, the city of a refuge in our life. So, because because of this, that we like to know whether we have or whether we know that I have or you have our own city of refuge in our lives. We all, most of us, we have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. When we accepted Jesus Christ, the things that we did is that asked forgiveness of our sins. So when we ask for the forgiveness of our sins, before it happens, our status was not only that we were children of a Satan, but we were under the slavery of our sins. Because we were born with a uh, sinful nature, and as we grow up, and then we commit sin, and then we commit sin again and again, and so we are always under the pressure, under the slavery of our sins, before we, we have our sins forgiven. But when we come to Jesus Christ, we ask for the forgiveness of our sins, because Jesus already paid the penalty. And because of this grace of God, and we believe that Jesus is our the Savior, and so we our sins are forgiven, and the moment that we accept Jesus Christ, 
We are freed. Exactly the same way that Israelites were freed from the slavery of Egyptian by God's plan of delivery of His people, that we are also freed from the slavery of sins when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. That's why the Romans chapter 8 verse 1 and 2 said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Because we have accepted Jesus Christ, as long as we are in Christ, we are free from the law of sin. Means the slavery of sin. Now, do you believe when you accept it and you pray to God to forgive your sins? Do you believe that your sins are forgiven? Amen. Do you believe also that your sins that you may commit in the future is also forgiven by Jesus Christ? Amen. Yeah, amen. He has died for all the sins that would believe in Him. And then when we happen to commit sin, that we can ask for the forgiveness of sins. Why? Because... God, Jesus, died, and once He died, is good enough. He doesn't have to die again and again. So, that's why we have to know how Jesus is functioning as the city of a refuge for us in our life. And He is opening His doors like the gates of a city of a refuge, the people who kill the person by mistake, run in here, we will protect you. The same way that Jesus is opening his doors of his heart and come into my heart. Come in, then I will also go into you. We've been driven around here and there before we got saved. Maybe you were a drunkard. Maybe you are drug addict. Maybe you are somebody that you are ashamed to say now. Because we were pulled by sins which was controlled by Satan. But once we got saved, once we become spiritually born again, then we, our sins are all gone. All gone. That's the grace of God. And we are happy with the fact that our sins are all forgiven. But... How many times we forget the grace, we forget the thankfulness of God, and then we commit sin and surrender to the temptation exactly the same way that Israelite did. But thanks to God, God is not only the God of a just and God of a righteousness, God of love, but He is God of patience. God is giving His all patience and tolerating our mistake and He sent Jesus Christ and that Jesus is telling us. And not only He said when He was in the Word, but He also recorded in the Bible and Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you the rest. If he knows, he knows already. He knows how how unstable we are. We make mistake. We commit sins against him. But he is a so patient, so accommodating. Once we are saved, God does not give up us easily, and he just continue and tell us. And he not only he is inviting us. And he said, he comes so close. He comes so close to the outside of your door of your heart. Everybody has a door here. Okay? And then he is knocking at the door. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Jesus 
once he know that we have accepted Jesus Christ and that we still commit sins but he is still patient and forgiving and that he is still encouraging us don't run away just open the door let me in then I will come in then I will eat with you so you will eat with me <clears throat> whenever Jesus tell you it's the time that we are facing some difficult time Jesus will speak to your heart and your ears of a spiritual ears and he said don't follow the pressure that is given by the Satan or the, do not follow the signs or lead, the leading coming from outside the word just listen to my voice listen to my voice and he is encouraging us to say bring your pressure to me throw all your heavy burdens on my sh upon my shoulder whenever he speak to your heart are you ready to run into his city of refuge or you still say I'm too shy I know that Filipinos particular word I'm too shy whether it's a boy or girl whether you are adults or young children they always use this so so common word I am too shy. Whenever they make a big mistake, I am too shy. When they even even uh, break their marriage or break their the relationship, because I am too shy to speak. Oh, what a devils are using their excuses to continue to use this word. I am too shy. We cannot do that because God is encouraging you to come and speak to Him and unload the things upon him so your life your life will be protected in many areas how many years do you think you will live in this world more than 100 years if God allows yes now there's many people living for more than 100 years but still Bible says 70 in average 80 when 70 or 80 years of living compared to the eternal living, which is much longer, eternal. In this life, while your body and soul is working together is one place, we said we are human being, living a life human being. But when it is a time came and your body is a separate from your soul and if you are born again then your spirit will be also separated and the body goes where? to the ground the soul before soul Holy Spirit will go back to God because it came from God and the soul that was in your body will go either one of the two places good place to go is a heaven and bad place to go is hell. There is no in between. There is no purgatory according to the Bible. Only either one of the two eternal places. Now, for the human being, especially the Israelite, God has given six city of refuge. Today, I also like to introduce six city of refuge for the for the human being nowadays. The first city of refuge is for the unbeliever, for the human being. The people who never accepted Jesus Christ. The first city of refuge, I should say, is a heaven. There's a heaven or hell that you can your, you can send your soul when you die. Like I said, the body will go to the ground and the soul unbeliever does not have a Holy Spirit yet so either body or soul the body goes to the ground the soul goes to some place eternal either heaven or hell if you are not ready if you did not prepare yourself to send your own soul your own soul to live in heaven forever while you are still alive while your body and soul is still in one piece 
and it's too late because there's no more chance once it's a split. Which means once you are physically, physically dead, there's no more chance for you to prepare for your soul to go to heaven. That's why God sent Jesus Christ to save the sinners in this world. And then when Jesus went back to heaven, told the church to continue to preach the gospel so the people who does not know Jesus Christ, so when you do not know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, you do not have a Holy Spirit inside. So the people who does not have a Holy Spirit inside, they will all go to hell when they die. So Jesus told the church to continue this mission. So we are, that's what we are doing. So first city of refuge for the whole human being in this world is a heaven by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. <laughs> Revelation chapter 20 verse 15 says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Then the question is, then how can my name be written in the life, the book of life? So John chapter 3 verse 3 says, Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Between these two verses, that we have to learn, we have to understand how we have our names recorded on the book of life in heaven. And John 3.3 3 said, Except a man be born again, born again does not mean physical born again, because we are physically already born. It's a spiritually born again. When we are born after the Adam, all human beings are born without Holy Spirit, because Holy Spirit already left when Adam commits sin. So we are all born spiritually dead condition and uh, so we, if, if there's no plan of salvation from God then we will all go to heaven. But because God loved the human being He prepared a plan of salvation He sent Jesus Christ so whosoever accepted believe in the name of Jesus Christ and accept Him as a personal Savior then He will be saved. When Jesus comes, Jesus is accepted into one person's heart, and He comes in, and then He restore, He restore the dead Holy Spirit. Dead means empty place for that particular person. Holy Spirit is God, so actually the Holy Spirit cannot be dead. But that particular particular person who never accepted Jesus Christ. The place where it used to be Holy Spirit is empty. So spiritually dead. When Jesus comes in, He regenerates or restores. The, the exact word in the Bible says quicken. Quicken the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit is regenerated or in, in, inside the heart. And that particular person is called spiritually alive or spiritually born again. So once you do that and you express to others, I have accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, then you already having the first city of refuge for your soul. Okay, the first city of refuge is for the unbelievers. So most of us already have that. But like the Israel, Israel people, even Israel people were chosen as a people of God, they still backslide, commit sin, run away, disobey, and same thing is happening to us who already have the very first city of refuge, which means that we are spiritually born again. Now, the second city of refuge when our body is attacked by sickness, when we are feeling pain in our body, do we have a place to protect it? Do we, do we need to have a city of refuge also? 
Of course, the first thing that we uh, we can recall when we have a sick body or pain in the body is the hospital. Yes, that's correct. But James chapter 5, verse 14 and 16, it says, James chapter 5, verse 14 and 16, it says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Here the elders of the church means uh, the pastor. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of a faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth that much. Amen. Now, I'm glad when some brothers or sisters is experiencing some uh, sickness or feeling pain, and some of them send me a text message, Pastor, please pray for me. I am I am suffering this illness or this disease. Okay. Then immediately I responded, okay, not only me, that whole church will pray for you. And then we start praying. And then I send the messages to the brothers and sisters. A hey, brother or sister is suffering from this illness. Let's pray for that person so he will be healed quickly. And this is the right way. And then if, if, if you go to the hospital, I'm not saying don't go to the hospital. I am saying, go to hospital, but you have to pray first. Amen. You have to pray for the, the help of God, an extension of His powerful and healing hands, all, also to the hands of a doctor who will be operating on you, or who will be meditating you, or who will be uh, uh, giving you some treatment, whatever that it may be. And if you pray to God, Lord, please extend your healing hands of power to my doctor, whether he's a believer or not, we do not know yet, but you can still pray so that doctor will have a more wisdom and right consulting power that he will take care of you. Now, if you have a serious sickness, of course, naturally we worry. But God told us to not worry. We have to struggle over ourselves. Should I worry or should I stop worrying? It is an unceasing, constant battle between our faith and worries. When we do not trust fully, then we stop worrying. Do you remember the story about Peter? Peter heard somebody, Peter and a few other disciples were in the boat, and the boat was a trampling like a, a small, a small boat in the big wave. And of course, there was no Jesus in the boat, and they were uh, they were very much uh, worried. And somebody was calling far distance, and the Peter heard him say, "Is it you, Master? And if it is you, Jesus?" Please call me to walk on the water. Because he had a faith. And Jesus said, come. And the moment that Peter heard, he bravely put his steps, first steps out of the boat. And stepped on the surface water. Surface of water. And he moved one step, two step. I don't know how many steps he went. But suddenly his eyes was moved from the Jesus to the wave. Sideway. And the moment that he become worried, oh, that big wave, and then he begin to sink. And the moment that he realized that his mistake, Master, I am sinking. Help me, save me. And Jesus said, Come, oh, you are man of a little faith. Why did you doubt? And pull it out. Now this is the example. This is the example. When we are hit by the sicknesses or some disease and we have to go through this uh, bigger or smaller operation or treatment naturally we begin to worry because we never experienced before but 
The teaching is, rather than worrying, you pray. Trust. Trust. And the church prayer and praying to God is our city of refuge when our body is attacked by uh, sicknesses or some disease. The next city of refuge in our life, when we have a problems in our family, not only the Filipinos, but Koreanos, every human being have a problem. Mm -hmm. Their colors may be, color of a problem may be somebody's uh, yellow, somebody's orange, somebody's red, red somebody's uh, the, the blue, all kinds. You may be, you can create maybe thousand different kinds of colors according to each, each kind of a problem. We use only one word, problem. But if you use coloring, maybe there will be many different kinds of a coloring of a problems. Okay, especially when we have a problems in the family. Okay, what is a major relationship in the family? Husband and wife? Parents and children, brothers and sisters. If you will, if we want to add one more, it will be relatives in the family. And this place, the home, out of the three institutions that God has given to us, the family is the first one that God has allowed us. Adam and Eve, married become the very first family, home. And then, they come on the government, they come on local church. So, in my opinion, the family is the most important among the three institutions that God has given to us. If we face any kind of a problems or difficulties in family, whether it's a big or small, we have to have a refuge, city of a refuge, so we can, our family can be protected. You have a million dollars in the uh, in the bank account, so you, do you think you can save your family problem with the money? Wrong. You know, according to the statistics in America or even in Korea, the one who strike the jackpot or got the lottery and have a tens of a million dollars. More than 60% of that family divorce because of the money. And some have a, a heart attack and die. And some of them are uh, met uh, the killers so who are interested in the money. So the money is not the, is really a solution for these uh, problems in the family. The refuge, the city of refuge for the family problem <coughs> will be the Word of God. Amen. We cannot find any solution in human court or at the school or encyclopedia or any other area but only the Word of God. If we follow what God is telling us to do for the family building, family protection, then that is the only way. Matthew chapter 19 verse 6, we all know, it says, Wherefore, there are no, no more twine, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Asunder means, this is not a contemporary word, only found in the Bible. Asunder means splitting, separating. Okay? What God has put together as a husband and wife, don't let any man, don't let any institution, don't let any, any things separate these people. Okay? This is what the Bible is saying regarding the home which, which needs the city of refuge. If you have any kind of problem, read the Bible. Find the solution from the Word of God. And 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8 says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. If anybody says that I am a Christian, 
And I don't mind my family is broken because my wife is not a believer. Or because my children is not listening to me or obey, obey my, me. So I want to throw them at all and then I want to be alone and my, uh, I, I will be a, a believer. Then the Bible says, if anybody behave like that, he is worse than an infidel. Infidel means unbeliever. And not only that, he is throwing his faith. Which means he's denying I'm a believer. He's denying I'm a believer and he is worse than an infidel. If he so when we read the word of God like this, we have to do our best. Even though I don't like my husband, even though I don't like my wife, even even though my uh, my children are not obeying. Because we've been away too long for many years and they now grew up uh, 15s or 20s and they no longer respect. But what can you do? Very clear God's word. It says, protect your family. Amen. And the word of God is the refuge, city of refuge to protect your family. The fourth city of refuge is where your money or your possession can be protected. You will think about the bank. <laughs> you will think about uh, some safe, a uh, huge safe in the bank that you, you put uh, uh, you put your million dollars there and then you say, ah, I have my security uh, there in the bank, so I'm okay. But don't you see in many television programs where they go through the, the bank robbery and they, they succeed and they steal all the dollars and the monies? That is not safe. If you want to protect, if you want to protect your money or your possession, you have to you have to put that money in the most safest place. Like uh, Luke chapter twelve, verse thirty-four says. It says, "For where your treasure is." There will your heart be also. Okay, look, 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 look. Look, look, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, it's easy to remember. Look, look, 1, 2, 3, 4. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Alright, what is a treasure? We're talking about the money, okay? So we can easily say the money is a treasure at this moment. And if you, if your heart is a fully occupied with the money that you want to do in the business or that you want to do some uh, whatever the investment that you, this, you do in this world, your heart will be occupied. And this world is not safe. But if you invest your money and possession. The possession is not only the money. We already know that is uh, your life, your heart, your money, or your, your time and talent, and the money is the least important. And if you invest this your possession where the robbery or where the moths or anything cannot attack, that is the best investment. Where is that place? In heaven. Heaven, how can we invest our cash in heaven? If you bring that possession, not only the money, into the church ministry and use it, your time for Him, use it for His ministry, whether in Korea or whether in the Philippines, whatever the ministry that you are assigned. If you have a one calling card, 10,000 won, and if you like to spend 30% of that 10,000 10, uh, value calling card to invite your friend, you are investing 30% of your possession that moment for his ministry, and you are investing 30% of that calling card in heaven. Amen. Do you understand correct? Amen. Once you invest in heaven, and your investment is totally protected. That is what Bible is saying. So, for your money or possession, the city of refuge is 
investment in heaven or in other word investment in the ministry if you don't do that you know what will happen your heart will be occupied by the love of money and first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 says for the love of money is the root of all evil if you love more and more the money and money and money and then your heart will be full of a evil and while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows because of the money pursuing lifestyle that you will face many sorrowful situations because of the money pursuing the another things that you you will need from the word of god philippians chapter 4 verse 11 to 13 God teaches us how to be contented. Whatever God gives you already, if you are earning only 800,000 a month, don't look at the people who make uh, 2 million a month, but if you learn to be contented and still use part of your earning for the ministry, then God will bless you more. That is how you can protect your money your possession in the city of the refuge. Philippians chapter 4 verse 11 to 13 is said that Apostle Paul has a recorded in the Bible, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to be abound. Everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to, both to abound and to offer the suffer need, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I thank God. Now as a missionary to the Philippines, I can do that without much sorry because when I was young, very young, teenagers, Korea was lot more worse than what it is in the Philippines. And when Korea was very, very poor, when American missionary came and he was trying to do the missionary work here and there in Seoul and province, and I was able to go after with him and then learn how he did, and then I was able to sleep everywhere or anywhere. I even remember sleeping on the, all of the, the those are gravels in the riverside. I don't know why, but I remember sleeping there with a, a newspaper spread over the rocks. And so, since I went through that kind of a difficult situation, the many things that I am facing in the Philippines, in the small province of Barangay, it makes no difference to me much. Even though my muscle may be painful because it's already softened for a long time, but my mind, I did it a long time ago, why not? Because my heart was trained that way, and I thank God because He trained to me, trained me that way when I was young, and I can still do it. So if we want to protect the money in the bank or some other places, or the business only in this world, then the money will not last very long because it's not at the right city of refuge. The real city of refuge for your position is a ministry. Investing in the ministry, which is investing in the heaven. So then once you invest your money in heaven, or the ministry of the church, your heart will follow the money where you invest it. Then you will become a person who is always thinking about your investment in heaven. Then that person's face will be always a smiling because you know it's the best place to stay, a best place to invest. But if you invest in the, the stock market, if you invest in the, some business, you cannot sleep peacefully because who knows what will happen the next day. We have a one huge uh, billionaire in Korea. He's one of the chairman in the Hyundai Group. Recently, for one year, his value of his asset dropped, dropped. 
I cannot even count because my hands are not enough. Uh, how many zeros? But 12 zeros? 12 zeros worth of money that he lost because the value of a stock that he owns dropped. You know how many, you know how, how big number is a 12 zero or 13 zeros? I don't even know how to use the word for that. Why? Because he invested. He invested in this word. It is not safe. But he's still very uh, billionaire because uh, he's only maybe uh, maybe 10% or 20% of what he lost. But it's a huge. The fifth city of refuge is a place where we can protect our pride. Our pride. So oh, what a pride I like to keep. The pride. Pastor and the member of the church. Christian. Or the husband or wife, they even have a pride. The parents and children, they also have a pride. The, the boss and the, the employee, they also have a pride. Each side, they have a pride. But when our pride is hurt, where can we heal our broken heart or the broken uh, the pride, damaged pride? Can you sue somebody and win over the court case and then I am now pride because uh, I, I won the, the court case but is your pride already killed? Do you remember you don't remember what happened in the past but you still remember even though you win the case you still remember then as long as you remember all those damaged pride the pride is not completely healed you may be compensated with the money because of the lawsuit winning. But your heart is not totally compensated. When you have a problem with the husband and wife, because we do that, we don't believe what Bible says. When you marry to a man or a woman as a husband and wife, Bible says you are no longer two. You are becoming one. And while you are one, if you want to prove that you are better than your husband, or you, you want to be uh, prove that you are better than your uh, wife, then you are not listening what God is talking about, husband and wife. And you want to prove. You want to, and you are already humiliated when the husband says something to you, or the wife says something to you, or between father and the father and the, the son, or the mother and daughter, we can easily be humiliated or offended. Even in our own church, I talk to some of the members and brothers and sisters here without intention of offending, but they easily be offended because, because perhaps my mistake, not understanding their culture uh, exactly, and then I say something. Uh, like a father to child, uh, but they are offended. Some run away from the church, and that's my mistake. And when we are, when we say that we are Christian, we should not use the, we should not use that uh, pride so much that will damage our own Christian life as well as the ministry. What is the city of refuge for our pride when it is hurt? And we, we do not we want the, something that we don't want to be hurt anymore. We need this refuge of city of refuge, which is the humility of Jesus Christ. You remember the humility of Jesus Christ? In another word, it's the humbleness of Jesus Christ. Humbleness. Jesus is God Himself. But he chose to be a human being. This is a big, big downgrade. You are familiar with the word downgrading because we are always using the computer programs and upgrade and downgrade. And Jesus was downgraded from the top to the bottom. He is a God himself, but he, he took the, car, the incarnation, uh, the human body. The huge humiliation. 
and we call it at the same time his humbleness. And still he come to this world and tell his followers and his disciples and even to you and me. He says in Matthew chapter 11 verse 29 and 30, he said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, follow after me. Take my yoke and follow what I do, at least in humbleness. And you, I be, because I become humble, so you become humble. And it's not difficult. He said, it's not difficult. If you just follow what I am doing, it will be easy for you to become humble. And then you will not be offended. And so as long as we remember the humbleness of Jesus Christ as the city of refuge for my pride. Then my pride will not be damaged. And my pride will be always protected. And then we will be enjoying our Christian life. The lastly, the sixth city of refuge is for our godliness. Our godliness as a Christian. We really want to be a holy and godly Christian. But uh, how many times that we fail? How many times did you decide to read the Bible for a whole year, early in January, and you stop? How many times did you decide not to do something bad, but you, you fail and do it again? This is a human nature. But we should not repeat and repeat and commit the same mistake. So, in order to maintain our godliness, and God asks us to be holy because God is holy. And so we really, we really need to find a way that we close, stay close. Stay close and our process is very important. We cannot become godly suddenly overnight. We have to improve like a little children is growing uh, physically. Uh, one, one year, two year, three years old become uh, 5 kilo, 10 kilo, uh, 15 kilos like this. We as a newly born again, no matter what age that you become born again Christian, we need to, we need to spiritually grow and become more and more godly person. And then that way our family, our spiritual family can uh, bring more strong unity in the church and we can be a help to the ministry and more you become stronger then you will be a help to other young Christians in the church and at the same time when you know that they are following after you you behave better when you do not know that people are watching that you can behave as 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 what you want but when, when you are respected in the church and the young Christians are looking after you, then, oh, oh, somebody's watching me. I have to behave better. Remember, God is always watching you. We forgot that many times. But still, our brothers and sisters in the same community, they're watching me, then it still help us to be more godly. Correct? We need to. We need to remember this. And Galatians chapter 6 verse 10 says, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Among the believers in the church, we should do better. We should do better to them than that you do outside. Sometimes you have a more friend outside. And you have very little friends in the church. Correct? Why? Because you are not following the rules of God. God says, once you do good, you can easily make friends. Correct? So, but you are doing more, more people outside that you are doing good. So you have a more friend outside than what you have in the, in the church. So we have to remember that. 
we, in order to maintain the godliness, make more friends in the church. If possible, don't make friends outside anymore. Stay away until you become very strong spiritually. Then you can go outside and make them a Christian. Okay? Once you have a many, many good friends outside, all the old body body friends, and if you now justly born again, don't go back to them because you never will grow. You stay in the church, completely block them out for a while, and then if you are trained strongly with a spirituality and become godly, and then you are ready to go out and win their soul. And then your old time best friends can come into your community again. Right? So that, that is the way that you can, uh, you can uh, use this, uh, the fellowship in the church as your refuge, city of refuge. The church, fellowship, and community, and this is a very important thing that for you to remember. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 12 says, even so ye, for as much as you are jealous of a spiritual gift, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. Whatever talent you have, whatever possession you have, use that to build the church. To edify means building, making others stronger. So whatever you have, your educational background, your money or possession, talent, time, whatever you have already, use it to build the church stronger. And in order to build the church stronger, you have to be in the church fellowship. Don't expect that you will grow stronger without being regularly in the church, church service, church Bible study, and fellowship. And I heard that one of the teams today, they say they want to have a, a, the fellowship outside. And then, uh, it's good. And uh, I'm not going to say where they're going to have their the fellowship. But it looks like their planning is very good. Amen. And if you want to have a good place of a city of a refuge for your uh, godliness, stay closer to the the church. What does it, uh, our slogan says here? Turn me unto the Lord. Okay? Say the Lord. This is how you can stay. This is how you can stay godly and holy as much as you can. And Ephesians chapter 5 verse 27 says that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such things but that it should be holy and without blemish. Blemish means stain or spot. So you, you, really, you really have to stay closer to the Lord through the church ministry, through the fellowship. You know, when we divide the teams team ministry, Apo, Mayong, Pinatubo, and Tai. It depends on the it depends on the members support to the leaders. After a few, several months, I saw one team is almost dying. And the other team is growing. Why? Because not because, not only because the leadership is not there, but because the leaders is not supporting. And the, the leader says, oh, we have some fellowship, come. And then out of the ten members, only two, three respond. That is not the ministry. Think about when you become a leader, and if the people are not responding to your leadership, what, what a sad leader you will be. So you really, you really have to support the ministry. You're not supporting the ministry because you like your leader. You're not coming here because you like the pastor. You're coming here because you want to build more relationship to God. I am doing this because I am doing my job that God has given to me. So I am doing this. I'm not saying I don't like you, but <laughs> same thing, vice versa. Okay? We need to support the ministry of God by fully supporting being in the ministry, in the fellowship, and in the, the, the worship, Bible study, discipleship, and 
soul yeah. winning, cleaning, whatever the church has prepared for you to grow spiritually. Then, more you are trained, then you will become more strong spiritually. God, and then you will become godly. So, if you have already accepted Jesus Christ, you are already in the first city of refuge. And thank God for that. But the rest, five city of refuge. The refuge for the body, refuge for your home, refuge for your money, refuge for your pride, refuge for your godliness. You have to be in that city of refuge. If you do not care too much, that somewhere that you will not be strong enough. And what is happening is, you are giving room to the Satan. Satan will come in and uh, the wall of your city of refuge will be collapsed. And then you will struggle. So, if there is anyone who has not yet found the first city of refuge, which means if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, today is the right time for you to accept Jesus Christ, as the Bible says. Behold, it is the right time, good time for you to be saved. And if you, behold, it is a, it's a right, right day. Today is the right day for you to be saved. And uh, so, if you have already accepted Jesus Christ, you already have the city of refuge, the first one. For the rest, five, five city of refuge that you have to keep it in your mind. And God has prepared. God has prepared all this for us to use and be protected. But if you do not use it, who can complain? That's your own choice. Because God has given a gift, free gift. I'll give this to you and uh, reach out and take it. Then it will become your free gift. But as long as you are not reaching out and you don't take it, even though there is a city of refuge, you cannot use it. It's up to your heart. That be ready to take it. Then, that your life will be always in joy. Whether you are in Korea or Philippines, whether your income is small or big, it doesn't really matter. Because to God, you will become a faithful and godly and trusting child of God and God will be happy with you. And that God will bless your life and be prepared that way. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for once again reminding us how the Israelites were doing against God's teaching. But you still have prepared the city of refuge for them. And also we found the city of refuge from the life of Jesus Christ and also from the Word of God and from the church and many places that we can apply. Lord, help us to bring ourselves to this city of refuge in our day-to-day -day life. If we are sick, Lord, if we are spiritually weak, if we are uh, our pride is uh, damaged, and whatever the difficulties that we have, help us to find the refuge, city of refuge, so we can find the peace and protection. Once again, thank you for the new visitors, and especially the family of Brother William and Sister Ben and his children, their children. Help them to enjoy their stay together with the, brother, the family of Brother Ben and uh, Sister Georgie. And then we, as a church, even though we are not prepared for the children's program, but help us to do something so they can also understand. Yes. Lord, once again, thank you for the message, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Salamat po.